Hello, my name is Jim Olson. I'm a math education professor at Western Illinois University. This is the fourth of five videos on making online quizzes with hot potatoes. In this video I'm going to show how to use online tutorials, online support, and the configuration window. I think to start with I'm going to show you a new quiz question type and see how that relates to the configuration window. So I'm going to go to jQuiz and I have typed in um, a question 5 here. The question is if four people divide eight thousand dollars how much does each person get? And I'm saying dollar sign blank just to kind of give them a clue and I'm also telling them just report the number without the dollar sign. Now this is a short answer question. Most of the questions we've been showing in the earlier videos were multiple choice. This one's short answer. When you're doing short answer, the student is going to have to type in the answer. And um, the advantage here over multiple choice is you don't have to come up with your distractor answers. The disadvantage is you do have to anticipate all the possible ways that the student might type in the answer. So I've typed in 2000, 2000 with a comma, 2000 with a decimal point and two zeros because it's money, <clears throat> and 2000 with a comma and a decimal point and two zeros. And I've indicated those as all correct answers on the right hand side. So as we've seen before, it's very easy to save this, create it as a web page, and then to test it out. View the exercise in the browser and it goes over to the browser. We do have to allow the blocked content. Yes, we want to do it. And now our quiz has five questions. And I'm going to go ahead and advance to question five here. Question five is the short answer. If four people divide $8,000, how much does each person get? And I will go ahead and get that right. I hit check. And it says it's correct. My score is 100% and I've completed so far one out of five. Now I'm going to refresh this and take the quiz again and I'm going to get it wrong this time. Let's say we think it's $2,200 and we hit check. One of the things that's kind of nice that Hot Potatoes does is it says your answer is partly incorrect. And it highlights the character that's incorrect. And I can change that. Maybe I know that it is 2000 And I can check that and it says that it is correct. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and go back and take this whole quiz. And um, I think I'll pause the video while I put in the answers. Okay, now I have completed the quiz. And I get this feedback right here. It says you've completed the exercise and questions answered correctly on the first time was 3 out of 5. And then the percent score is here. And um, how Hot Potatoes arrives at that percent, you need to look in the... Um, help screens to see that. It's a little bit unusual, but kind of this information is very important that I answered three out of five on the first attempt. Now we're going to return to jQuiz and we're going to look at the configuration window. The configuration window is underneath options, so we had options, configure output, and we have a whole bunch of different options here. There are many tabs across the top. And the first one is I can put in an exercise subtitle that's going to be underneath the title of my exercise. And here I can type in my instructions. Since some of my questions are now multiple choice and some of them are fill in the blank, um, I'm going to be typing some, some new information here. Okay, now I've typed in my instructions that this is a mental math exercise and that the student should try to calculate the answer in their head first then look at the possible answers and pick the correct answer or type in the answer if a blank is provided. 
So we're going to see this the next time we view the quiz. The other thing I'd like to show you right now on the configuration window is under one of these other tabs here. I believe it's, yes, it's underneath the other tab. And there are a number of choices that you can pick here. And right now it says, show the number of questions answered correctly in one guess is checked. And you may recall that I got three out of five correct on the first guess last time. Let's go ahead and uncheck that. And I'm going to hit OK. And we'll follow our typical sequence. We save the quiz file. Then we create the web page. And then we view it in the browser. And um, as usual, I do have to allow the block content. And let's go ahead and take the quiz here. I'm going to go ahead and hit the hint button here and it tells me the first character in the answer. If you don't want the hint button shown you can change that in the configuration window. Now the clicking the hint button does reduce your your percentage. Okay notice that the results I'm getting here say that I've completed the exercise but it does not tell me how many I answered correctly on the first attempt. That's because I did not check that box in the configuration window. I'm going to reload the quiz here um, and notice that it tells the directions across the top. I believe those questions, uh, those directions go away once you have started to answer the questions. Okay, let me show you a couple more useful things here on the configuration window. We saw here in the first tab is where we can have our instructions. Here's where you can change your different feedbacks. Here's where you can take away the hint button if you want to and take away the show answer button. This one is actually one that you might want to consider unchecking if you don't want the student just clicking and seeing the answer. It's going to require them to type something in. So what, I think we'll go ahead and change that. Here you can change your color scheme of the quiz if you would like to and some other things with the graphics and font. You can put a timer on this. You can see that this Hot Potatoes program is very full featured, has lots of nice options. And the other screen is the one where we have things like shuffling the order of the questions, shuffling the order of the answers, showing the number of questions answered correctly on the first guess, and many other options. So I'm going to hit OK, and I'm going to resave this and go through the same procedure. Now this time, when I get over here to item 5, which is the fill in the blank, I do not have the hint button and I do not have the show answer button. So the, the user is going to have to put in something. it says please try again. Now let's see if I can get some of this correct. Yes, when I get some of it correct it says your answer is partially incorrect and it highlights the part that's incorrect. So we see that in jQuiz the configuration window 
has gives us lots of options for different things we can do. Next thing I'd like to do is show you the videos <coughs> and the two I guess it's tutorials that are online for learning how to work with hot potatoes. So you start at the same hot potatoes website where we uh, loaded the software, where we registered the software, and let's come over here to tutorials. There are a number of tutorials here. I'll just show you how the standard tutorial for Windows works. Welcome to the hot potatoes tutorial. This runs right in the browser, kind of looks like a quiz. And you can <coughs> proceed through here and it explains the different parts to this. I can go back to the index. A hot Potatoes uh, one by one tells how the J quiz works, J close, and so on. So the tutorials are very nice. The other thing I'd like to show you is the support. If we hit support here, it's going to automatically go over to a Yahoo group. And this, you may be familiar with this phenomenon. This is where different users have typed in questions and different users have typed in answers. So if you have a question about hot potatoes, you can find out about it here in this site. So I'm going to ask if I can figure out how the, the different quizzes are scored. So I'm going to type in how quiz types are scored. I'm going to search for that. And here are the different possibilities here. And uh, looking over this, I think I'm going to click this one. And this takes me to the response that was written by this person, Martin Holmes. It says, many users have asked how the percentage score is calculated in jQuiz and whether it is possible to change the system. Here's a brief explanation. And uh, it explains it here. I believe that the uh, percent score that you get is the percent of the wrong answers which you avoided. So if you did not choose any of the wrong answers, uh, you get 100% because you avoided 100% of the wrong answers. But I'll let you read those details there yourself. So in this video, we have looked at the configuration window, online tutorials, and online support. In our final video, we will show how to upload your quiz to the Internet.